Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, we're going to take a look at uniform convergence of functions and show that if I have a sequence of continuous functions that converge to a function uniformly, then that function is also continuous. This is a theorem in a real analysis class you'd probably see. And so we're going to prove that. So what does it mean for a function or a sequence of functions to converge uniformly? Well, that means uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, so I'll let, I'll let epsilon be greater than zero, that would mean there exists some n, some integer n, which, which depends on epsilon. So you can either say n of epsilon or n sub epsilon. And that would mean that um, there exists an n sub epsilon such that for all little n greater than n sub epsilon, and I guess I should specify that this is bigger than zero, that the absolute value of f of f sub n of x minus f of x is less than epsilon for all little x in E, where E is the domain. Usually it's just signified by a closed interval a, b. I'll just call it e for shorthand. Now in this proof, I'm actually going to make it less than epsilon over 3. Um, since this is smaller than epsilon, I can make it arbitrarily small. So I'll just make it epsilon over 3 for the significance of this proof. So that's what it means to converge uniformly. What does it mean if each individual fn is continuous? Well, that means if I fix some x naught in my domain, in my closed interval a, b, which I'm calling e, that means that there exists some delta greater than zero, such that the distance between x and x naught less than delta would imply the distance between f sub n of x minus f sub n of x naught is less than epsilon. And again, for the sake of this proof, since I can make it arbitrarily small, I'll make it less than epsilon over three. And you'll see where these epsilon over three are coming in in just a second. So here I have the fact of what it means to converge uniformly. Here I have the fact of what it means to be continuous. And now I wanna show that f is continuous. So letting epsilon greater than zero and letting all n greater than this n and letting x minus x not less than delta, here's what we'll have. We want to show that f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. That's what it means for a function to be continuous at x naught. And so I'm going to do a classic real analysis trick. I'm just going to add by zero a bunch. So I have f of x. I'm going to subtract f sub n of x, which means to make it zero, I'd have to add f sub n of x. And then I'm going to subtract f sub n of x naught, which means I'd have to add f sub n of x naught to make it a zero. And then I still have that minus f of x naught at the end there. So you can see in between here, I've added zero twice. And I've, I've done that so I can introduce these facts that I've concluded up here. And now I take advantage of the triangle inequality, just like you do with many real analysis proofs. So by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to, and I'll break it into three parts. I'll break it into this first part, plus I'll break it into the second part, and then I'm plus the absolute value of this, this third part. And so what I have here is I know what all three of these things are bounded by, f of x minus f sub n of x. Well, that was right here. It doesn't matter that the order is reversed since it's an absolute value. This I said was less than epsilon over three. This piece here, f sub n of x minus f sub n of x naught, well, I have that right here. That was because each f sub n was continuous. I have that's less than epsilon over three. And then here, f sub n of x naught um, minus, if you can see that, f of x naught. That's also by this first fact, since, since 
this fact holds true for all x in my domain, x0 is also in my domain. So this is also less than epsilon over 3 for the same reason. And if I add 3 thirds, that's just going to give me um, 1 epsilon. And so what I've shown here is that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that x minus x0 in absolute value less than delta implies that f of x minus x0 is less than epsilon. That's what it means for f to be continuous at a point x0. So that proves the theorem that a uniform convergent sequence of functions, which are each continuous, converge to a continuous function. Very powerful in real analysis. So I hope this video helped you out. If you found this helpful, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Have a great day.